So how to close your first SMA client in 2023. This is going to be the full guide for you, right? And by the end of this video, you'll be able to close with absolutely zero experience and you'll be able to sell like a seasoned veteran. You'll be able to have your owners know, like, and trust you with absolutely no experience at all, but I'm not going to guarantee you on how to service the client. That'll be for another video. So let's dive into it. I was always a very shy kid. I had trouble talking with new people and COVID didn't make that any better. When it came time to start my business, I was socially anxious and socially anxious plus sales is equal to humiliation. Now, outreach was never really scary to me because it was just sending messages. I didn't have to see anyone, but appointments on that hand, they scared me. And before I jumped onto my first sales call, I was trembling to make matters worse. The prospect laughed at me on my first sales call. So I was nervous and the prospect laughed at me and I was beyond defeated after this. I was even less confident in my sales ability and this brought me to my breaking point with my agency, but I had to keep moving forward. I got very good at outreach and kept hitting appointments, but I was still terrified of sales. I used to wish my prospects didn't even show up to the calls, but after my fourth sales call, a prospect said something to me that actually was constructive criticism for the first time and allowed me to reshape the way that I do my business. And it was brief, but it changed my sales forever. And the words were, be honest and tell your story. He didn't tell me how or why to do it, but he was smarter than me. He was richer than me, so I listened. So I set off to learn and how to actually implement this into my sales. And flash forward to today, this exact selling framework has landed 81 plus people their first client. So here it is. First is to make an icebreaker. Second is to tell your story, which consists of the background, journey, consequence, solution vehicle. The third is to brief your service. And then the fourth over here is to close and to give the next steps. So the icebreaker, breaking it ice and breaking the advice is all about, you know, let me go back here. So I should read it. So breaking the ice is all about niche resonation, right? So it's all about how much the niche you actually selected helps you out. And asking an ice breaking question regarding their business is one of the best ways to do this. So as an example, I would be in the soccer school niche if I were to restart my agency because it resonates with me. So the situation, let's say it's a soccer school from New Jersey. And the question I would ask the person to start actual call and start how I'd help them would be, you know, hey, how are you gearing up for the outdoor season? Because right now the sun's finally coming out. It's starting to get to the outdoor season of soccer. And I only know that because I resonated with the niche and I played for all my life growing up, right? And that'd be a great icebreaker question because it would get me in. So, but Alex, you know, like that's on a framework. How does that help me? Because sales isn't about frameworks. And that's what I've really learned. You are speaking with a human being, so act like one right? Opening the conversation has everything to do with niche resonation. And when you understand the niche, it becomes super easily. So meet Wyatt. Wyatt is a friend, long time friend of mine, four years or so. And Wyatt signed his first client in eight hours and had three clients in three days after starting his agency. And I listened to his first discovery call live, right? In, you know, discord call, he was on the phone after showing him this framework and he was super nervous before the call, right? He was similar to me where we played video games. We both weren't these incredibly socially outgoing people, but Wyatt is an MMA fighter, right? He's an MMA fighter. So he's, you know, jujitsu wrestling, all that stuff. And he's reaching out to Brazilian jujitsu schools within five minutes of the call. They had already kicked off and spent 30 minutes just talking about combat sports in general, barely even talked about business and service. By the end of the call, the prospect asked him to work, right? So the prospect asked him to go and work for his company. So ice breaking should be extremely natural, right? And that is just a story to drive home how important that actually is. And the way to make it natural comes down to selecting the right niche for you. So that's how you break the ice. And I know it wasn't the exact advice that you might hope for, but it's exactly how you do it. Number two is the story. So this is the most important part of the actual sell. As soon as we've broken the ice, it is time to actually tell our story so they know who we are, they can like and trust us. As I've talked about, you know, there is a selling hierarchy. But once again, I will show you a little bit more about that. So let me put my face over here. Boom. So the selling hierarchy. So usually when we're speaking with an appointment, they are going to be a business owner, right? So I'll put them as the prospect and they are going to be all the way up here. And we are going to be all the way down here because, you know, we are in our first, our first, you know, trying to get our first client for our business, trying to get our first few clients for our business, still working on free trials, paper show, whatever it might be. And they are a business owner who has enough money to run advertisements. So they're a lot higher up than us in the totem pole and understanding that dynamic. So understanding that they are on level, let's, let's level this. So boom, 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 one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So they are on level seven and we are on level one, right? So if we're talking to a level seven person and we're on level one, we can't, you know, ask them these questions that are equal level questions. So we can't talk to them like they're an equal to us. We can't say, hey, how business going? Hey, what's your revenue looking like this month? Oh, da -da -da, is this causing you a problem? We can't do that. 
right? Because it'd be like if your baby cousin, who you're on level 10 to, and right, he is all the way down here, would to come to you and ask you about your agency, right? It'd be stupid. Like, why, why is he asking me about this? Why is he doing all this stuff, right? So it's the exact same thing with how the prospects look at us. And I didn't understand this at all. I thought, you know, we're completely equal. And doing that, I would be trying to talk to them straight or talk to them slightly down, which was a huge mistake because of that the prospects didn't care. And then that's how the prospect ended up laughing at me. So what I learned is you want to talk up to them. And the best way to talk up to people is a story because what a story allows you to do is allows you to relate to this person, right? Even though they might be on level seven now, they were once level one. So if you tell your story of how you got started, you can slowly, slowly, slowly climb this ladder and actually speak with them, speaking up with them and telling your story. And that is why, you know, it's so important to actually do this instead of asking the questions that you might want to ask when you yourself are a level six or level seven agency owner and you can talk to them straight. So that is the importance of hierarchy, right? And if we go back into the presentation here, understanding it is the best way to make a prospect know that can trust you. And I'm not you, right? So I don't, you know, know your story, know what you do, but I want you to take your life experiences and put them into this framework right here. So number one, background, number two, journey, number three, consequence, and number four, the solution vehicle. So as an example, here's what mine would be. So my background is I'm a 16 year old who played soccer competitively and played video games competitively, but I'll leave that out because I'm reaching out to soccer schools. My journey. So I never felt the nine to five path was for me and I just wanted freedom. I wanted to start a business. The consequence was having to go to college, right? Because that aligned with the nine to five path that I wanted to avoid. And the solution vehicle for that was starting a business servicing football clubs and learning from my mentor. So that would be my story, right? And I wouldn't write it down in point form. I would just write it down exactly like that. But I would practice it in the mirror or by myself till I know it in my heart. And I'd go over it again and again and again and again. So let me tell mine again, right? So I'd say, hey, you know, so my name is Alex. I'm a 16 year old just in the process of starting my business right now. And the reason I started my business is because, you know, I look around and when I worked at a restaurant, I just saw a bunch of people who I don't want to judge them on their life experiences, but just weren't who I wanted to be. I didn't want to be the guy who had to show up at 9 a.m. and leave at 5 p.m. and never really get to experience the freedom, get to travel, get to really enjoy life. For that reason, I just started to start my business. Starting my business, I managed to convince my parents to give me about a year or so where I can really spread my wings and just try to, I guess, make it in the world. And if I don't, I'd go back to college. So that's kind of the consequence that I'm fighting against, fighting against time here. And for that reason, da, 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 and I keep continuing on like that and telling my story, right? That isn't true, obviously, because I'm not reaching out to soccer schools. I still played soccer, I saw all of these things, but my story would be how I started my appointment setting agency. So it's time to present your service after we've done the initial breakdown of your story and gave them the consequence. And my consequence was not going to college. So it should be naturally attached to your story, right? So as I started my business and I didn't want to go to college, I actually realized that, you know, I wanted to help soccer schools. And the best way to do that, I did a lot of research. I actually met a mentor and what they do is they run these Facebook ads, right? And these Facebook ads allow you to bring in all of this cold audience, nurture them through so you can bring in new students without having to go to any events, without having to do anything on your end, except for, you know, you just have a good business, have a good service, right? And that's why I decided to reach out because I wanted to see, you know, if you'd be potentially interested in having me, you know, go ahead and work with that for you. And that's how I go about doing it, right? So it's, I can bring you X, or I can help X, so this would be your niche, bring desired result using service. And that's why I decided to reach out. And when explaining your offer, the most important thing is not to make a better offer, but to have a different offer, right? I see in a lot, a lot of people in the first client challenge, especially when they come through at first, right? What their offers will be is, hey, da -da -da, I'm going to get you 30 guaranteed appointments or your money back guaranteed, or I'm going to do this money back guaranteed, or I'll shave my head if I don't get you this result. And as much as that's a great thing, if a homeless guy walked up to you on the street right now and he said, hey, give me a thousand bucks and I'll come back tomorrow with 10,000, you wouldn't buy from him, right? Because you just don't trust him. And if you don't have a track record of actually delivering those results, a guarantee isn't going to make you stand out the same way that the prospects up here and you're down here. So it's the same parallel between you and the homeless guy. And I'm not saying that you're above him, just for the example's sake. So instead, I run Facebook ads and sorry, instead of I run Facebook ads and you go, I level automations to pass it off to you. I would say I place paid advertisements in front of your ideal customers. Then you say I had to nurture the leads and pass the ones who are on the fence off and on the fence ready to buy over to you, right? It's the exact same service. It's still Facebook as the lead form to go high level to nurture to call, right? It's the exact same service. Just one's positioned in a way that not everyone's heard. And then one is positioned in the, you know, the, the old, old fashioned da, 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 that they get pitched a lot with.
And that is how I mean by you want to position your offer a little bit differently. So exact same thing, different wording. One sounds far more appealing than the other. So you can generate a lot more interest. And that's how you present the actual service to your prospect and how you pop the final question. So after you've done the service, this is what I'd say. So, you know, does this sound like something that you'd be potentially interested in moving forward with? Right. And you want to wait, right? It's a business decision on their end. So after you say this question, I want you to zip your lips. Don't say a thing. Wait for their response. And that's the close, right? They say yes. They say no. They give a smoke screen objection. Here's what you can do after. So it's all about remaining casual and you're actually on these sales calls because we're lower on the totem pole. We can't position ourselves as the expert. Right? We can't push them to do anything because they're so much higher than us. And as soon as we are positioned as an expert, when we're actually not, we are going to get battered, right? Because if you're an expert, then you should have case studies. You should have a portfolio. You should have all these things. And if you're a beginner, just like I was, you're not going to have those things. And that's actually why the prospect ended up laughing at me, right? So the biggest advantage that you can have with the actual niche is having the resonation and burning that story into your mind. You should be able to tell that story off the top of your head every single time and get better and better and better and better at it every single time. And it's that simple, right? So after the response, if the pitch is a yes, schedule the onboarding call while you're still on the call. This is very important while you're still on the call if they say yes. So all the call, I would pen them in for the next date. It's as soon as possible is the best. If you get a no, you're going to move on, right? It's just a no. But if you get a lukewarm smoke screen objection, which is going to be the most common one, while you're first beginning, you're still refining the actual process of telling your story. There are two golden follow-ups you want to do, right? So if they say, hey, you know, I'll have to think about it, da da da, da two follow-ups. Number one, so let's say we're talking to Michael. Hey, Michael, just where do we where do we go from here, right? And I don't need to do the fake stutter thing. <laughs> we're going to send this as a text message. So, hey, Michael, where do we go from here? They don't respond to that, which, you know, I have a story actually about a person used this follow-up. They had a prospect that wasn't responding to them for weeks. And they used that one follow-up. Hey, where do we go from here? And they responded in five minutes after following up with them for two weeks, not getting a response. And after that, it is, hey, name, have we given up on this? And those two follow-ups alone are going to be stronger than any, you know, sequence, hey, sir, kind reminder, that da 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 da, da thing that you can do, right? Those two follow-ups are extremely strong. That's how you solidify the deal. So use this information wisely and avoid the sales mistakes I made. I appreciate your time and I hope that the value or I hope that the time I stole from you is worth the value I provided. Peace.